Hey guys, how you all doing? It's Shadrajora here again, back with another video from BHM at GCSE Chem. And today we're going to be doing C4.3, so section C4.3, um, which is called From Masses to Balanced Equations. And this is for higher tier students only. Um, so for those studying triple science and for those studying combined higher. Um, so combined science, higher tier. So um, just like the last section as well. And uh, I said I would denote, uh, I would represent, you know, to say that it's higher tier, I would use HT, but I actually did HTS only if you saw my last video. And that was for higher tier students only. So that's what HTS means. And I'll be doing that again for when I, when I put the title to this video today. And uh, sorry if you can hear you know, the fan, it's really hot again. So I've just started the fan here and I'm back in my, uh, uh, back in my um, you know norm like the uh, uh, living room today to make the video and uh, yeah so today we're doing C4.3 from masses to balanced equations this is the book that I'm using it's the GCSE oh, it's the AQA GCSE chemistry Caboodle revision guide um, there you go um, yeah so, so that's the book I'm using and today we're doing from uh, C4.3 which is from masses to balanced equations so that's what it's called. And it's, uh, again, I've got some paper and a pen to kind of write stuff, uh, to do calculations today. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, I don't actually have my calculator, but I don't think I'm going to need it. Uh, the calculations seem relatively simple, so that's good. So yeah, let's begin without further ado. And also in the last section, there weren't any keywords. So that's why I didn't um, point any out. That's why I didn't talk about that. Uh, um, just to let you know, and if you're following the student book, it's pages 66 to pa uh, pages 66 to 67. And again, I haven't been able to put the links to all the videos from um, C3.2 to C4.2 on my website yet. I'll try and do it by today again. Uh, I keep saying it, but I'll try and do it. You know, as soon as possible, try and update it. And uh, till C4.3, obviously, after I've done this, after I've recorded this video, I'll put, I'll try, <coughs> I'll try and put all the links to my. Um, videos basically or to from C3.2 to C4.3 on my website today hopefully I'll be able to do that but without further ado let's begin so C4.3 from masses to balanced equations and um, uh, pages 66 it's pages 66 to pages um, so if you're following the student book it's pages 66 to 67 yeah, and also one thing before we start, I don't want to you know trouble any GCSE students, but I'm pretty sure you would have heard the news that there are maybe it's not being officially confirmed yet, but like fully confirmed, but they are maybe thinking to delay the GCSE results day, but push it back maybe a couple of weeks because of to sort out this A level mess up. You know, all the you know, forty percent of grades, almost forty percent of grades were downgraded for A level, so they want to sort this up by uh, sort this out by appeals process and stuff. So they might delay the GCSE results day, which was was to be held on 20th of August and still currently is on the 20th of August it, no, it's not changed but they're having you know they're thinking about changing it maybe pushing it back a couple of weeks just to let you know now we're doing C4.3 from masses to balanced equations if you're following the student book again it's pages 66 to 67 and uh, let's begin so you can calculate the balancing numbers called multipliers in a chemical in an equation so that the balancing numbers are the big numbers you can calculate them from masses of substances involved in a reaction. First, what you do is you calculate the number of moles of each reactant and product. Then the simplest whole number ratio of the moles of reactants and products gives you the balanced equations. So what it gives you the balanced equations. That might not make much sense. We're going to go through an example and another example as well. I think we're going to go through two examples in this section. But basically, you first calculate the moles of each of the reactants and the products all the reactants of the products and then you divide by the smallest um, no, uh, like smallest whole number ratio oh the simplest whole number ratio moles of reactants products gives you the month symbol equation then you're going to divide by the smallest number so it's a bit like empirical formula uh, if you if you know what that is um, if you've been through that before but yeah I'll give you an example so here here's actually a question 0.2 moles of hydrogen H2 react with 0.2 moles of chlorine Cl2 to produce 0.4 moles of hydrogen chloride HCl and it says what is the equation for this reaction now obviously you could do H2 plus Cl2 gives you HCl and balance it that way but we want to be able to balance an equation from moles 
So uh, from given moles or even from given masses, which we're going to see that example, that specific example from masses, we're going to see in a worked example. But now this one, they've given the moles. So the first step, what I do, it says 0.2 moles of hydrogen, which is H2, reacts with 0.2 moles of chlorine, Cl2, to produce 0.2, 0.4, sorry, 0.4 moles of hydrogen chloride. What is the equation for the reaction? So I'd first write down what the elements are. So I'd write H2 plus Cl2 and I'm producing HCl so and below them so this is what I've written below them what I'd write is the number of moles so below them below the uh, below each of these um, below each of the species I'd write the number of moles so for hydrogen it was 0.2 for chlorine it was 0.2 and for that was for H2, with hydrogen H2, it's C, um, 0.2. For chlorine Cl2, it's 0.2. And then for hydrogen chloride, they said it was 0.4. So literally just wrote the number of moles. You could write MOL for mole, but I just know it's moles. So in fact, write it. You know, it's, it's clearer if you write it maybe to the examiner as well. I recommend because it might be, it could be 0.2 grams. It could be 0.2 anything really. So I'd recommend writing that. And then it's like empirical formula. So we can see that 0.2 moles <coughs> is the smallest number here. 0.2 is the smallest number out of all of them. So we're going to divide each of these values by 0.2. And that would basically give us um, 1 for hydrogen, 1 for chlorine, and 0.4 divided by 0.2 is 2. Because obviously 0.2 divided by 0.2 is just 1. And then again, for that's for hydrogen and chlorine. And then for HCl, it was, HCl, it was 0.4 moles. Divide that by the smallest number, which is 0.2. And that gives us 2. Then I just put dots like this to just show it's a 1 to 1 to 2 ratio. So hopefully you can see it's that 1 to 1 to 2 ratio. And so now I basically have my equation. Now that means it gives me then ratios, molar ratios, the stoichiometric ratios, <coughs> as they're also known. So 1 just means H2. When you have, whenever you have a 1 as a big number, you don't write 1 H2. You just write it as H2. And then also there was 1 Cl, so 1 Cl2. Uh, but we don't write 1 uh, in front of the Cl2. We just write it as that. And because they're 2 HCl, we just write 2 HCl. And there is the balance symbol equation. And that's what we expected, right? So here on the bottom I've written H2 plus Cl2 gives you 2 HCl. And you can see either side you have two hydrogens on the left, two hydrogens on the right, two chlorines on the left, two chlorines on the right. So you can see it all balances and it's really good. Um, so yeah, so just to repeat that point again, two hydrogens on the left, two on the right because it's 2H, two chlorines on the left, and then two Cl, so two chlorines on the right. So it all balances. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and uh, let me just make sure I, I was right, but it all balances, so it looks good. Um, let me just make sure I haven't missed anything out, or yeah, because I always want to make sure now. Uh, with this kind of stuff, it's very important to check your answers as well. And uh, yes, the ratio was 0 0.2 to 0 0.2 to 0 0.4. So basically, the simplest ratio we then divided by the smallest number, which was 0 0.2. So we got 1 to 1 to 2. So then we got the equation H2 plus Cl2 gives you 2HCl. That's exactly what I did. And um, that's how you do it. So it's really, really cool how we, how we got how we got just from the number of moles, we can actually work out the a balanced, like a whole balanced equation. It's so cool. I, that's just, I just find that so interesting. One of my favorite things in chemistry, again, when I was doing my GCSEs, like I love the calculations chapter. I've told you before, uh, I think it was my favorite chapter out of all of them. But uh, yeah. Um, and um, so yeah, use uh, use moles. Uh, so now here we got a worked example. So using moles to balance equations. So now we have magnesium burns an oxygen gas O2. Magnesium Mg burns an oxygen gas O2 to form magnesium oxide, MgO. When when 9.6 grams of magnesium is heated until its mass is constant, 16.16.0 grams of magnesium oxide is produced. What mass <coughs> what mass of oxygen must have been given off in the reaction? Well, we know that from the, I think we did it very early on, I think, uh, I think maybe it was in the first section, actually, in the first ever, you know, teaching video, 
um, C1.1 in atoms, I think, or well, maybe it was in C1.2. I'm not exactly sure, but we did it really early on where mass is always conserved. So 9.6 grams of magnesium react, and we have 16 grams of magnesium oxide. That's the only product. So that means, well, the, num the, the mass of oxygen, which is part A question, must be 16 minus 9.6, and that is 6.4 grams. And uh, yeah, so here, just for part A, it says the law of conservation of mass says the total number of ma a total mass of reactants equals total mass of products. So mass of oxygen is X grams. If we let that be X, the magnesium plus oxygen is magnesium oxide. 9.6 plus X is 16. So then, therefore, 9.6 grams plus X grams is 16 grams. Therefore, we say that X grams is 16 grams minus 9.6 grams. Therefore, the mass of oxygen is 6.4. So if I just show you the working out to that. Uh, so we basically get 6.4 grams. That was all part A, basically. Now let's go to part B. So now we know that 6.4 grams of oxygen uh, must be given off. We know that because of the um, uh, law of conservation of mass, which we've been through very early on in, um, from when I started making videos, basically, for chemistry. Um, and then it says calculate the number of moles of each reactant and product. Now, um, so calculating the number of moles in, uh, of each reactant and product. Well, for magnesium, uh, the number of moles of magnesium. Well, uh, first, what you need to do is wait. One minute, let me just see myself. Wait. So yeah, magnesium plus O2. Yeah. So um, we know O2 is 32. We know that, right? We know um, O2 is 32, and we know that uh, the number of uh, um, and we know for MR of MgO is 40 because it's 24 plus 16. We know that all from the relative atomic masses from the periodic table. So we then know the equation, number of moles equals mass over, over MR, mass in grams over MR, or mass in grams over AR, depending on whether you're using a single kind of um, atom or you know, a molecule or you're using a you know, compound. But basically moles of magnesium would be 9.6 9 grams, because that was the uh, mass of magnesium, divided by 24, which is the relative Ton mass of magnesium, which is 0 0.4, and then the, to do the same for oxygen. Obviously, it would be 6.4 grams divided by 32 because it was 16 times 2 because there were two oxygen atoms to make up the molecule. So that would be 0 0.2 grams of oxygen, 0 0.4 gram. Uh, sorry, 0 0.4 moles of magnesium, 0 0.2 moles of oxygen molecules, and 0 0.4 and 0 0.4 moles of magnesium atoms. 0.2 moles of oxygen molecules and then for moles of magnesium oxide again this MgO so we're going to do 16 grams because uh, we were we knew we were given it 16 grams of magnesium again number of moles equals the mass in grams over the MR or AR here um, here the AR which is the relative formula mass of magnesium oxide is 24 plus 16 which is 40 again that comes from the um, periodic table you know the top number in the periodic table so then we work out each of these moles basically we've been through how to work out moles so 0 0.4 moles for magnesium 0 0.2 moles for oxygen and then 0 0.4 moles for magnesium oxide and then we have a ratio of 0 0.4 to 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 and then it's basically like the question before where we divide by the smallest number which is obviously 0 0.2 so then we get to 2 to 1 to 2 ratio because it was 0 0.4 0 0.2 0 0.4 so that means we get um, 2 to 1 to 2 so then the balance equation must be 2mg plus O2 gives you 2mgO now hopefully all that made sense is basically all what we've been doing before um, there's the working out if you want to see it. it's basically what we did in question number one but in this case what they you first had to work out the mass of oxygen and from there you had to work out the number of moles of each um, of all the reactants in the products and when you knew the number of moles which is obviously calculated by mass in grams divided by the molar mass um, or uh, divided by AR or MR the relative atomic mass or the relative formula mass um, which can be calculated using the top numbers, uh, the bigger numbers, sorry, uh, which are also the top numbers from the periodic table. So once you've worked out the moles, then it's just a case of um, dividing by the smallest number um, to get your simplest ratio. And basically, whatever your simplest ratio is, that's basically there are the coefficients of your um, kind of for each of the reactants in the product. So it was two to one to two, and we did it in the uh, did it in order of MgO2 and MgO. So that'll be two Mg plus O2 gives you two MgO. So hopefully that makes sense, and it's quite simple, really. So um, now we're going on to the next point. So um, here also, just want to make another point. Here they gave, um, here they broken down the steps, you know, just to um, kind of understand it. 
uh, to make you understand like how the how the process works. In an exam, they could actually this could be a this could well be a four four mark question. I could I could quite easily see this being at least a three or a four mark question, um, where they could not have any parts. They might just take you know this is the mass of magnesium, this is the mass of magnesium oxide. From there, work out the balanced equation without without any parts it could be just like oh question number two without any parts for five marks or four marks or whatever you know this is the mass of magnesium this is the mass of um, magnesium oxide from there just work out the balance equation just it could be as you know it, that could be all they give you they, they, they might not like here they've scaffolded it um, that's what we call it when they scaffold a question like that when they put it in part A part B part C they might not do that in the exam and um, because uh, particularly because this is for higher tier students they might expect you to already know this so it's very important to get actually be very fluent with these type of calculations so that you can ace the exam really and ace these they're quite you know relatively easy things you think simple all of it is literally just ratios and just remembering an equation that number of moles equals mass over molar mass and then it's just ratios divided by the smallest number getting your coefficients and that's your balanced equation so um, hopefully that makes sense so usually when you're carrying out a, ca a chemical reaction in experiments you use an excess of one rea one of the reactants to make sure the other reactant is all used up. So when you're carrying out reactions, chemical reactions and experiments, you normally use excess of one reactant. So one reactant is um, normally uh, in excess, and that is to. Uh, sorry, I believe the lighting was a bit of a. Sorry if it was a bit dark uh, today. I don't know why I didn't why I didn't fix the lighting a bit um, earlier, but hopefully it's okay. Uh, so one reactant is in uh, one of the reactants is in excess to make sure the other reactants all used up. Now, um, so we normally put you know one reactant in excess. Um, the reactant that gets used up in the reaction is uh, re uh, the reactant that gets used up first in a, in a reaction is the limiting reactant. So that's the reactant that gets first used up in a reaction. So what is a limiting reactant? Um, by the way, because the because of uh, maybe it wasn't as clear with the lighting last time I, I increased the brightness a bit hopefully you can see all this working out from the last question there in the worked example and uh, sorry about any noise there guys and then um, this just in case you, you can see my working out there I'm not going to go through it again but um, there you go that's how I worked out H2 plus Cl2 gives you 2 HCl So, um, sorry about the noise there. And then, uh, what is the limiting reactant? So, uh, just to, sorry about any noise there, guys. The limiting reactant. So, yeah, I said it's the reactant that gets first used up in a reaction is the limiting reactant. And uh, so, let's see if that's right. The reactant that gets used up first in a reaction. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. So, um, the keywords in this section. The key words in this section are limiting reactant. Yeah. Topic. Um, so that's the only key word in this section. Uh, topic C 1.2 gives information about law of conservation of mass. Yeah, it was C 1.2 that were gave about law of conservation of mass, basically. And uh, key points just to finish off. Uh, you can deduce balanced symbol equations from masses and hence find the ratios. Of the or, or the of the number of moles of substances involved in a chemical reaction, yeah, you can work at the number of moles using ratios, and you know, kind of, and from there you can deduce basically symbol uh, balanced symbol equations or balanced equations, basically you can say. And uh, then the next point is the reactant that gets used up first in the reaction is the is called the limiting reactant. This reactant, this is the reactant not in excess, basically, and therefore the amount of product formed in a chemical reaction um, are determined. Um, yeah, therefore the amount of product, amount of product, amounts of product forming the chemical reaction are determined by the limiting reaction. Because if the limiting reactant finishes, um, if we have no more of the limiting reactant, then the reactant can't obviously, then the reaction can't obviously proceed. And uh, yeah, so um, that's all for today, guys. That's the end of the section. Uh, I'll try and put the links up to the videos from uh, you know on my website for C3.2 till C4.3 now. And this is a HTS only. Um, section higher tier students only just like the last one which I'll um, note in the title and tomorrow we're going to be going through uh, C 4.4
uh, the yield of a chemical reaction. So that's very important. I think that's only for triple science students only. And uh, yeah, make sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hopefully, it was yes useful and helpful. Make sure to share, like, and subscribe if you haven't already. Turn the notification bell on if you haven't already as well. Um, so then you're notified and updated um, when I upload new videos that you can watch. And um, yeah, I think that's it for uh, uh, today. Um, uh, thanks for all the support as always. And um, thank you very much, guys. Bye.